Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. As I was reminded by Matt Testa, I should have told you that the push rods should be kept in order when you remove them from the engine. As you can see with this block of wood, I can very clearly inspect them to make sure that they're straight and they're not worn too much. Right, so a handy little hint, you can just put a uh, 9 or 10 mil drill bit through a piece of wood, mark them the numbers, and then you have your push rods in order. Right, so with the cylinder head cleaning with paraffin, this actually is a very messy job, especially if you have a lot of carbon in the ports. You'll see a bit later how much carbon is actually in this cylinder head. Just to dry off the components, remove any little bits of dirt and carbon or whatever else, use a bit of compressed air if you're lucky enough to have a compressor in your workshop. Okay, you need to keep your valves in order so you can make up something for keeping them. Also a container for your collets and your stem caps and some measuring tools. We're using um, some feeler gauges, a vernier gauge and a straight edge. We also use quite a lot for maintenance a dial gauge. If you haven't got one then I'd advise when you're following our tutorials along that you do actually get one. I also have an inlet valve and an exhaust valve for measuring. This just makes it easier for measuring the wear on the valve guides. First thing to do always is to check the head gasket. Don't chuck it away. This will tell you a lot about how this engine and what the condition is. Also the exhaust and inlet manifold gasket will tell you stories um, and you can see if anything has blown past this gasket. Now this one here has a uh, piece of carbon on the edge. Now this has been blowing through this point, you can see that very, very clearly. So you can hear this engine here chuffing, it actually come through the head gasket and not the exhaust as we first thought. You can see very clearly also on the cylinder head where the gas has been blowing through and it's built up carbon, so this has been blowing for a fair while. This cylinder head has had a head gasket failure between number two and number three. Right, so as I say, the gasket, you can also see if you've had cooling system problems because these are where your water galleries are to your cylinder head. They should not be blocked at all. If there is evidence that these ports are blocked, then more than likely that your cylinder head has been overheated. Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to remove the valves, but you will need a valve spring compressor. Um, from Paddock Spares, very reasonable price indeed for this piece of equipment. And if you look now on our playlist, we have a 300 TDI engine overhaul playlist and the OHV valve spring compressor, we cover that. This will show you how to use this piece of equipment properly to remove your valves proficiently. There's also a piece on how to measure your valves, but we will cover it in this tutorial. A link is below this video in the YouTube section description. So what we've done here, we've removed the valves and we have them in order. You can see they're numbered on this piece of metal and I've marked it to the front so I know where I'm at. Okay so we can go ahead and visually check the valve and what we're looking for is any signs of pitting or burning on the valve edge here. Okay once it comes into focus you can see that there is a slight pitting and carbon that might well have been trapped. Valve seat here also you want to check to see if they're burnt or whether there's any pitting involved here. Generally it should be fairly clean and shiny and that's without any carbon trapped in between. Right, so the valve is generally self-cleaning. It turns as the engine's running. It will turn and clean any carbon off, but after a time it will pit. If it's been overheated, then it will be damaged and you'll be able to see that. This is the exhaust valve and you can see the buildup of coke or carbon on here, which really needs to be cleaned up. But um, with the inlet, you see here, this is a mixture of oil, possibly from the turbo and from the EGR valve, which is exhaust soot, which is not good. Best way to remove this is to steam clean the head. Checking a measurement of the valves involves four operations. Valve stand down, valve stem wear, valve guide wear, and valve spring free length. Land Rover Workshop Manual LRL 0070 ENG is overhaul manual for the 300 TDI engine as well as the R380 and the LT230 gearbox. 
This manual is invaluable for collecting data. It is also available on PDF. If you're lucky, you can find it free. Here at the LRTV, we prefer paper copies, and yes, we have purchased them. Okay, so looking at the valve information on engine data, we should go down here to the bottom. It says a valve head stand down gives two different measurements for inlet and exhaust. Now, first thing I'm going to do, this cylinder head is still dirty. So I'm just going to even the surface of the cylinder head up a little bit by taking off the carbon. This is done with a very sharp blade. Now, this is a glass cleaning blade, if you like, or a uh, blade for cleaning off ceramic hobs. Measuring stand down is measuring the space between the face of the valve and the face of the cylinder head. This is important for two reasons. One, if it's too high, then the valve will hit the piston. Two, if it's too low, that means that you will be losing a certain amount of compression. You want it just about right. If the valve edge is too thin, it will burn out. Okay, with a new valve, you can check to see if the valve seat itself is worn too deeply. Okay, because that hasn't yet been cut in. First of all, what I want to do is get a straight edge across the face of the cylinder head and then use uh, something like a one millimeter feeler blade and see how much space we have between the cylinder head and the valve face. This is on both valves. You can see the measurements here. If they're out of tolerance, then either the seat has worn or the valve has worn too much. This is why I have a new valve. So I can pop out one of the old valves and then put this into place and see how much the seat has actually worn. So you get the general idea is assessing whether it's the valve that's worn or the seat that's worn. And this point, using the same feeler gauge, and it is actually the valve seat itself that's worn, that will need replacing at that point because it's out of tolerance. The good thing with feeler gauge is you can find two feelers and get a measurement that you feel is correct and then try it. Okay, now I'm at 1.5 mil, so that's not 1.5 mil wear. However, it is at one mil. And the exhaust is 1.14 mil maximum stand down. So what we're looking at here, going back to our one millimeter, we have a worn seat. If for instance, a new valve was standing proud, uh, on the exhaust and it, you measured less than 0.86 of a millimetre, it means the seat can be cut safely and a new valve are put in place. If the measurement between the valve face, the new valve face and the straight edge is greater than 1.4 for instance on the exhaust, it means that the valve seat will need replacing. Record and write down each measurement and then assess what you need to replace. Measuring the stems and the valve guides is very important. Basically, if they're too worn, what you'll find is that oil will be drawn through the valve stems and the guides and burnt in the cylinders. Basically, you'll find this at start up. If they're too worn, then changing just the stem seals will not work. For measuring the valve stems, you're going to need a vernier gauge that is fairly accurate. You could also use a micrometer for this job. In the following section, this is from an older video that will explain exactly how to measure the stems. It can't be pitted at all. Okay, we're well going to have to be prepared to measure stuff. And with the old valve, you need to measure it in three places. At the top, in the middle, okay. Measure the tolerances there to see if they're within what the manual says and at the bottom as well of the valve. This will give you an idea to see if the stem of the valve is worn beyond tolerances. Precision engineering is necessary here, so check, measure and recheck. Discard anything that's out of tolerance. Basically, in the workshop data, again, we're looking at stem diameters, inlet, you have your between your two measurements and also exhaust between your two measurements. Okay, so how do you know the difference between your exhaust valve and your inlet valve? Basically, one is slightly larger than the other, or you could work it out by the amount of carbon that is built up onto the stem, or you could use the manifold gasket as a reference and then mark out your head so you know which one is which. Generally, it works out from either end, exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust, exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust. You'll also notice by the data that the exhaust valve is actually slightly thinner than the inlet. This is due to the fact it gets hotter so it needs to expand that little bit more. 
Basically, if you took a, a mean average of uh, between tolerances, you could then measure it. You can see where the shiny parts are. This is where the valve is worn. I wouldn't expect these stems to be oval because they turn in the valve guides. Okay, so measuring it in three places, you want to measure and record and discard any valves that are out of tolerance. Do this for all eight valves and record the measurements so you can then assess how much this is going to cost you to overhaul your cylinder head. Okay, so measuring the valve guide wear, you do this with a good valve. Obviously, you'd have measured them first and realised which ones are good and which are not. And using a dial gauge, this will tell you if it's out of tolerance or not. The following video clips will tell you very clearly how to do this. Basically, if it's too worn, then there's the risk of having your oil sucked into the cylinders on startup. Obviously, you need a slop in there so the valves can expand and work correctly. Measuring the valve guide itself, you're going to need a new valve, okay? Now that will be put into the valve guide, put up to 8 millimeters height to the top of the head of the valve. Once you've done that, then you're ready to get something like a dial gauge. Offer that up and zero it. What we're looking for is movement of a new valve in the valve guide and you can see the dial gauge here is actually moving. There is a tolerance to this and that will be found in a workshop manual. You can see by this example here what it's actually saying. Okay so the maximum permitted uh, movement is 0 0.15 of a millimeter. Remember that the exhaust valve stem and the inlet stem are different. Right, so here's a mistake that you could possibly make is to set the dial gauge up and then it goes all over the place. You can see the cylinder head has moved and it's unstable so you won't get a reading at all. You really need a clamp that bolts onto the head. However, we've done this cack handed just to show you what sort of mistake we can make. Right, so basically you need to check all the valves in the valve guides, record them and then you can assess exactly what the condition of the head is like. Okay, so measuring the free length of the springs, very important. If they're too short, they're obviously weak, and you will also get valve bounce as you rev the engine harder. You should always make sure that these are as stated in the workshop manual. Okay, so free length means it's got no load on it, and the length is 46.28 millimeters. Now, this is easier to do with your vernier calipers. Just put them between there, measure them. If they are under that tolerance, then chuck them away. If they are too large, then they probably were made in China and you shouldn't use them anyway. They should be 46.28 millimeters. Okay, so this is quite a long tutorial and I hope you understood what I was talking about. Right, last little thing, little reminder, on your um, cylinder head, underneath the valve spring, you have some wear plates. Um, obviously, you would have taken your stem seals off and this will facilitate the ability to be able to get these plates out. Okay, I had to use a little bit of air to blow these out. These are important. This stops the spring wearing the aluminium head. Plenty more tutorials to come on this, and we've uh, plenty more jobs to do on the cylinder head, checking and measuring before we go ahead and replace anything else. So just before I go, here's a little trick of using uh, two nuts, and you uh, wind them together. Okay, the camera in focus first. You wind them together, lock them together on a stud. This will help you remove studs out of the head because they can be a bit awkward at times.